that's all. Um, and I thought, I was kind of angry. I went back home and I start thinking. I said, you know, I have to do something so I can get in. So what I did, I wrote letters. Um, I like writing letters. So I wrote to the President, Secretary of State, and Defense uh, Secretary, asking him, why can't I go to Vietnam? I love America. Even though I was born in another country, the other country is in my home country. America is where you get freedom and, and you can do whatever you want to do. And main thing, you have food. Like in, I remember as being a little girl that there were times that we starved. But the coming to America was the greatest gift that I, well, I could give us. Then finally, about two weeks later, they would uh, call me again, and uh, the recruiter said, oh, Anne, you can go to Vietnam. Uh, you have a special clearance, which I was very, very happy. So then I apply, I, we went to get uh, sworn in, and we went to our basics, where they taught us about the rules and regulations about the service, and then we went to uh, camp to learn about nursing, which I worked about three years after graduation. But in this nursing, you had to do things that you cannot do in civilian life. What I had to do, we had to learn about the breeding, which you take care of the wounds, suturing, intubating, and doing things that we never did before, but the military taught us to do all that. Then after we finished that. I had a duty station for two months and I got orders for uh, Vietnam. I went to, we flew from from uh, Philly down to San Francisco uh, and Hawaii then to Vietnam. You cannot understand, unless you've been through it, coming down the pl uh, plane, coming down, the smell that hits you. It was the most nauseating he and a humid air was unbelievable. When uh, oh, we got there, we went to the 90th Replacement Center where we got our assignment. After getting our assignment, uh, in two days we flew to our uh, hospital. I was stationed in the train at 8th Field for six months. And the hospital took had more of patients recuperating where gunshot wounds of the legs, arms, abdomen, and they were on their way to recovery. Some of them who uh, got better within 30 days, they would be going back to their unit, while the other ones were either shipped to Japan or Hawaii. So it wasn't that stressful at all, because I never, the hospital was all a uh, brick hospital. It was in the law, it was very large. So you never got to go to ER or anything where you uh, would help because we would get like one or two critical patients that got shot, gunshot wounds. Then in six months after being at, field, at the field hospital, because their field hospital is just for, you know, like recuperating, you don't get the uh, patients who are critical. Then in Toyua, and it was dead offensive, we worked, I mean, that's why you heard day and night helicopters coming in, you had to you know, all work together. And uh, we, we had to triage uh, all the patients, which was a new thing in uh, nursing or in medical field. Uh, but you, you triage the one that had to be taken care of, stat, and then down the line. We did that for Ted Offense, and they just kept coming and coming. Then the patients were made stable, the ones that are real critical, either OR or whatever we needed to do, then they would be sent out to a specialty. Like Saigon had a surgery center, so that's where they were helicoptered to. And our medics, I'll tell you when we used to get our patients, medics in the field are godsend. They, they saved so many lives. Right in the field they would start uh, the IV, do good bandaging so they don't bleed, bleed to death. I have so much respect for them. They give me chills to just think about them. But after I spent about six months in uh, Tuiwa, 91st back, when it was time for me to go home, 
you know, I thought, I can't go home. What will they do? What will the new nurses do? They don't know what we know after one year. And I'll tell you, the Army would not let you re-enlist while you were overseas. You had to come home. That was the sad, it was happy that I was leaving to see my family, but it was sad because I thought, how would they manage without me? You know, you think yourself, you know, because you feel like you know what you're doing, and that, that was hard. But finally we left to, for the world. Then uh, as we came into San Francisco, we were checked in. The first thing they told us is, you can wear your uniform. And that was the sad thing when we were told, you have to put your civilian clothes on because of all the problems. I thought, well, gee, we didn't keep up with the news, what was going on. But uh, so we had to change. But I'm from a little town in Pennsylvania, Midland. They were the greatest people there, I'll tell you. They accepted me, no, no protesting, nothing. It was all, little towns always kind of stuck together and cared for their uh, citizens. My, uh, uh, I always think of all my brothers who suffered, and I'll tell you, I went to the opening of the wall with my husband, who had PTSD and passed away with suicide. But uh, when when I think, I, I think about what's, what's going to happen, you go up to the wall, and you always think as a nurse, you're here to help you save a life, and you may you feel guilty that these names are on the wall. What could I have done so the names would be there? That's the hardest thing to accept. And finally, about four years ago, I was able to go to the wall with the help of my uh, brothers, and I realized that I can't save everybody. There's times when, you know, damage. And uh, I'll tell you, those guys really suffered, and I just love America, and that's, that's all I have to say, is that God bless America, the land of the free.